What is going on my peeps, your man Versal is back with another video, back here to talk about Spider-Man Miles Morales, PS5, or in my case, getting it for the PS4, the duration of the game, how long the game is, or should I say, according to some people, how short the game is. Is that a problem? But before we get into answering that question, if you guys haven't already, ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, so that way you never miss my video, so that way we can sit back, chillax, and see what's cracking. Now, let's get into the video. So, Miles Morales. As we've been hearing, the review roundup was uh, what had taken place the last couple days of this week. What would that be, November 5th and November 6th is when the reviews started dropping for Spider-Man Miles Morales. Overall, it sounds like it's a great game. It's a game that we're all gonna be looking forward to and is going to enjoy playing. But then alongside that, we've also heard that the game is relatively short. And I think by short, the easiest comparison is Uncharted Lost Legacy being around 10 hours or so. Sorry, my phone is tripping. So is that a bad thing? Is that a problem for Spider-Man? Well, let's look at a couple factors that make it not a problem. And that's the, and the first thing is, the price that we're paying, which is $50 for Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS5 or PS4. And as you would with any traditional remaster game, you typically pay about $20 for the remaster. And so the ultimate launch edition, that's a bundle package for the PS5 is getting Spider-Man remastered with Spider-Man Miles Morales, that's $70. That's a very fair price given what we're going to get with the game. So just from that perspective alone in terms of price, it's not a bad thing. Now, what potentially could make it a bad thing is the fact that it is a launch title and it's very uh, relatively short launch title that we will have access to play. But even then, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing given that Astro's Playroom is also very short and basically a tutorial to how to understand, use, and fill out the DualSense controller and PS5. And two, with the PlayStation Plus collection launching alongside the PS5, you'll have a ton of games you can play that will take advantage of the PS5 new hardware, thus not having to worry about not having anything to play. And so I think that that's a, a plus, a pro, not a con, to Spider-Man Miles Morales being on the shorter side. What else does not actually make it a bad thing? Well, when you think about Spider-Man for PS4, the original 2018 Marvel Spider-Man game that dropped, that game took about roughly 20 to 25 hours to complete when you consider all the side quests and the storyline. Whereas the Spider-Man Miles Morales, it seems like even with the side missions and the side quests, it probably roughly takes maybe 12 to 15 hours to complete, a whole 10 hours shorter than Marvel Spider-Man. But one of the critiques or biggest criticisms about Marvel Spider-Man was the fact that when you played the game, you there was a lot of repetition in terms of the side missions. There was only one or two that really stood out to me when I played it. One, it was a tombstone uh, side mission, which was a legit side mission and added story and depth to Peter Parker, to Spider-Man, to the world of New York. And then you had the side mission that was repetitive, but at least it was uh, rewarding in the end, which was the Taskmaster challenges in that when you completed them and throughout completed them, you actually faced Taskmaster. But again, what I, I said in the former part of that statement was that it was a lot of repetition with the challenges. You had the combat challenges, the stealth challenges, like the bomb challenges, just to name the three that I can think of off the top of my head. And it was like, you had to do each one of those like two to three times a piece. So you had the repetition there. Then you had the pigeon side mission, which wasn't too bad, but it also didn't need to have that many pigeons. I think it's about 12 pigeons. You did not have to, you shouldn't have had to, 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 to find and locate 12 different pigeons. The chase was kind of fun, but it was a little bit too much. And then the shocker portion of the story almost felt a little side questy, even though it wasn't, but that's what added great 
uh, story building for Spider-Man PS4. But as I said, a lot of these side missions, a lot of the hideouts, it was too many hideouts, right? It was like six or seven hideouts for each different type of person, Whether you had the demons, which were N Mr. Negative's henchmen, I believe, or that was Fisk's agents or uh, you know criminal uh, mastermind group. And then you had the Sable Outpost, which also had a ton of those. So when you think of repetition, you think of having to do eight, nine, 10 different posts of all these. Well, what it seems like Insomniac did for Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales is they shortened all that. And so now the side missions that we get feel like they actually add more value to the game rather than just being there to extend the game. And also, when you think about the backpacks that you had to get in Marvel Spider-Man, it was like 55 backpacks that we had to go around and collect throughout you know, Manhattan or basically New York. And I think Miles Morales has something similar called like time capsules or something like that. So it's kind of similar, but I don't think it's to the degree in which we had to search out 55. It's probably half that. So Insomniac literally just took all those side missions and shortened them most likely to one or two things. And then the side missions felt like they added character to, uh, to Miles, added character to Harlem, to Miles's Spider-Man. And so when you think of short, it's not necessarily short, it's a real solid story that you can complete basically within a day's worth of time and not like three hours worth of day, uh, you know, three hours, but we're looking like a legit 10 hours, which isn't bad at all. That's a very, very good time. So to me, personally, and in my honest, humble opinion, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a perfectly fine length game. It's a game that you can play, have fun in, and then you can turn back around and play it again with all your suits, all your skills and, and gadgets and all, and all that, and run it back and not feel exhausted having to play through it again. Something that we kind of felt like when we, re, uh, when we played New Game Plus for Marvel Spider-Man. And so I think that this is, this, this is not a bad thing at all. Now, here's, here's where we actually may run into a problem is if we do get more games that are this long in length, you know, 10 to 12 hours, 15 hours to complete the game, and we're still getting charged $70. Now, to me, I don't think that's a problem either, ultimately, because I think the developers should more or less make and get more of their money's worth for the hard work that they put into making these games for us. And with the technology that we now have, it's gotta have to kind of go. It's, it, we got, you know, we gotta pay our dues somewhere. And paying for these games isn't necessarily gonna be a bad thing. Maybe games that are not that long stay in the fifty to sixty dollar range if they do contemplate that because of the time it now takes to for them to complete the game. And they, they don't have to spend and do a bunch of crunch on games that are 20, 25, 30 hours in length. Of course, we still get those like God of War two, Spider Man two, right? stuff like that, but games that can have smaller, I don't wanna say smaller, but more traditional based storylines that are 10 to 15 hours in length is more than great for us, especially as gamers, especially if we're looking to play a lot of older games on the new system to take advantage of the new hardware to now, to now have no problems with the previous games that we played on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro. I think this is gonna be something that works to our benefit more than to our detriment. And so I think that maybe a lot of people may be blowing, out, blowing it out of proportion as to how short or how long Spider-Man Miles Morales is because if it was just as long as Spider-Man, we would complain about the repetition in gameplay, much that we hear from Marvel Spider-Man, the first one, and even Marvel's Avengers, right? People would complain from that aspect. So this is one of those things where we want to be more cons considerable or more, more happy more fair in terms of our judgment on the game instead of putting the developers in it between a rock and a hard place they can't win if they give us something shorter they can't win if they give us something longer because of the development time that it takes to build out a lot of that content for a long period of time whereas they can actually build more meaningful content in a somewhat smaller package and not smaller in a bad way just simply smaller than 20 to 25 hours and so I think that's something we got to keep in mind when considering games that that may start, you know, tinkering, 
when they start eyeballing that 10 to 15 hour range. But those are my thoughts about Miles Morales and games in that, in that time length in general. I appreciate it. It makes it more fun to play the game, makes it maybe a little bit more easier to platinum the game. What are your guys' thoughts? What do you think? Do you think Spider-Man Miles Morales is too short? Do you think it's too long, which would be a little bit surprising? Do you actually find it to be a, a good point? Are you, would you look forward to more games being in this time length? Let me know down in the comments section below. But if you haven't already, again, ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos. So that way we can sit back, chillax, and see what's cracking. But your man Versal signing out, and until the next video, Wait for it.